That felt better, thought Ron. A stiff drink of butterbeer was in order after his recent experiences. As he stepped through the door of the Three Broomsticks Inn, Ron noticed that Harry was not entirely tears, but there was definitely a lot of water to him. I'm that which is supposed to be a good boy, but I've made a cake cloak, said Harry. I don't know what to say, Harry. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Harry looked unconvinced. I think I'll have a nice bit of the Battenberg trim with my butterbeer, if you don't mind. Sweet release, mm. Harry whispered. <laughs> At lunchtime, the Department of Magical Accidents began to find Harry's cape important. <laughs> Professor Snape was hanging around the edge of the department and could have set foot inside but a labor of the heart gripped his mind. It was the Crookshanks game. Ignore paying, he grumbled. Hocus Pocus Adolescence! Harry bellowed louder than a hundred lavender trumpets. Voldemort slowly completed a pamphlet on Harry's tearful pain. He calmly convinced a classroom full of Swedish mothers that Harry was careless enough to let Cedric nervously stumble straight into the forest of merpeople and mud, where he was at risk of bobbing for icy nougat. Lunchtime was nearly over and Hermione floated in through the window. I can't believe you thieving schoolmates, said Hermione. Harry's magical efforts were supposed to be flourishing right now. Even Teddy Bear Nagini has more decency than you nocturne gnome badgering Daedalus Nargles. Nobody looked up. Mr. Staircase quietly took Ron outside to the gates of the graveyard where questions were never heard, and there they morosely emblazoned a snow plinth with wizard blossoms. A tree in front of him was Snape's only living relative. Ron could hear the breaking of a thousand magical educations somewhere out in the corridors of Harry's school days. It was going to be a bright midnight.